Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash free. You can declare and use variables, which are stored values that can be referenced and manipulated within a report. However, to use a variable, you must first create it by declaring its existence within a formula. Once you have created the variable, you can then assign or pass values to the variable, which it can then store. The variable and its stored value, or values, can then be used by the formulas within the report. The first part of this process is declaring the variable, and this is the process where we create the variable and set its initial values. So let's choose a formula field and click New to create a new formula field. What we're going to do is we're going to create a new running sum. Let's say that we would like to sum the total sales for each employee, but only if the total sales were greater than $30,000. In order to create some sort of conditional running total, we would need to create a new formula field. So let's go ahead and click New and give the formula a name. Then we're going to click Use Editor. Now, the first part of this process that will be used is declaring the variable. And this is where we create the variable, set its initial values, and the first aspect of this is defining the data type that the variable will contain. Most commonly, the variable is defined using one of the seven simple data types. Number var for number values you wish to calculate. Currency var for currency variables which you wish to calculate. String var for any text characters. Boolean var for logical values, date var for date values, time var for time values, and date time var for both date time values. And these are listed in the operators pane under variable declarations. Also, in addition to the standard simple data types, there are also other ranged and array types available for a total of up to 26 different types of variables, which you can use for your formulas in your reports. Next, you just need to set the name of the variable. So after declaring the currency var, you just type in the name. The name can contain up to 254 characters, but it should probably be very short, unique, and descriptive. They may contain numbers, but they cannot have a number as the first character in the name, and spaces are never allowed in variable names. Also, be aware that the name of the variable cannot be identical to any operator or function used in Crystal Reports. Also be aware that when you declare variables with the same name and type in more than one formula, they then share the variable and the value. You can define the scope of a variable to determine where it can and cannot be used. And in Crystal Syntax, you declare a variable in the formula text window by typing the variable type, a literal space character, followed by the variable name, such as order total. And once the variable has been declared, it must then have values assigned to it. And if you have no value assigned to the variable, it will have a blank or zero value depending on the type of variable which you declared. So to assign a value to a variable, you use the assignment operator of the colon equal sign to accomplish this. So for example, if we wanted to assign order total, the value of whatever was stored in the sum of orders for each employee, but only if it was greater than $30,000. We could do this by simply extending this formula, making a second line using the semicolon and then a carriage return, and then using a if-then-else statement. So if, and then the value to be evaluated, which is the order amount for each employee, Let's say if that is greater than or equal to 30,000, then, and here's where we actually do the assignment. So order total, the name of the variable, and then the assignment operator, colon equals, and then we assign the value by either typing it in or inputting a formula, which in this case, if that's true, if the amount shown in that field is greater than or equal to 30,000, then we want to set order total to the value that it's currently displaying, 
plus the value added from the sum of the order amount for each employee. If, however, order total is not finding an employee ID order amount that is greater than 30,000, we don't want it to add that in then. So it should just equal itself in that case. And you can check your syntax when you're done. And then just save and close. Then we can use that in the report. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com/free.